Hello, my name is Alicia and this is The Nurse Rx. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today, I am here to go over the results of my endoscopy and colonoscopy that I had at the end of July. Now, if you watch my previous video, that video is in regards to, um, I told you guys I became very ill over the summertime. I had caught pneumonia. I was prescribed doxycycline trips to urgent care, trips to the emergency room, nothing could ever be found. Um, upon my visit to the emergency room, um, my doctors told me, everything's fine, you're good, just follow up with the GI doctor and have them do some tests on you. Um, as I was actually going home from the emergency room, I'm reading over my notes at midnight as I'm traveling home from the emergency room and that's when I found the slew of medical issues that was on my test results that were performed in the ER but the doctors never revealed to me such as ovarian cyst, fatty liver, gastritis, and things of that nature. So I took it upon myself to contact my GI doctor. I found a GI doctor here in my local area. When I find doctors, I look for doctors that typically have really, really good reviews. If I can find five-star doctors, amazing. Um, they have to have multiple reviews so I can take a look to see exactly what other patients' experiences were with that particular doctor and or office. So I found a GI doctor. Um, not a surgeon. Now, the one who did my hiatal hernia repair was a GI surgeon. So I couldn't go back to him per se for the issues I was having as far as my upper abdominal pain because he's a surgeon. He doesn't treat, you know, everyday issues. He just fixes them. So I went to my uh, G new GI doctor and let basically sat down for an appointment, let them know everything that was going on with me um, in regards to some GI issues I was having. So at that time, we decided, we collaborated, and we decided, yes, let's do an endoscopy, colonoscopy. I had to wait, I want to say two or three weeks before I could have that done because, of course, it needs to be approved through your insurance company and things of that nature. So it's a lot that really goes into it. You just can't say, yes, I want to have this done yes let's do it tomorrow as a process as a step your procedures that you need to do you see me looking down i have some notes in front of me i just want to refer back to since it's now been over about almost oh my gosh about two months <laughs> so i had my endoscopy and colonoscopy done at the end of july basically the results from that are as follow they said i did have very chronic inflammation in my esophagus and um, at my esophageal, esophageal junction as well. And I also had a lot of inflammation in my stomach. You know, when the food goes down, your stomach is here, not my intestines, but my stomach area. Um, they were saying they tested for cancer, didn't have cancer of my esophagus or anything to that nature, thank God. But what they, the only thing they can uh, attest to and probably conclude is that the inflammation was caused by the doxycycline, the antibiotic I was taking. Keep in mind, I had a hiatal hernia repair done at the uh, in May of 2022. When they do a hiatal hernia repair, they make a very tight seal from your esophagus from your, in your stomach so your stomach doesn't protrude up through your diaphragm. So I didn't have the Nissen, which is 360 degrees. I had the toupee fund duplication, which is 270 degrees. And for me, that's still pretty tight. I'm still, you know, having really good results from that. So I'm not really stressed about that at all. Um, but what happened was when I was taking my medication, my doxycycline, which is not a very big pill at all, I would take it, but it wouldn't, and I would take some water. I wasn't drinking enough water to get it down right directly into my stomach. Cause I would drink the water, take the pill, drink the water, walk away. What was happening in my case, the pill would just sit right at that junction until it disintegrated into my stomach, like dissolved into my stomach. 
to start working in things at that magnitude. Doxycycline is a very good antibiotic. It can help treat a lot of different problems. In that same vein, doxycycline is a very harsh antibiotic. It can cause a plethora of issues. It can cause pancreatitis. It can um, cause ulcers because it's very, very, very harsh. Um, you have to take it with food or it can cause really bad nausea and vomiting. Very good, but very, very strong. So in my case, when I was taking my doxycycline, it would go down, but then it would just sit in that area before it passed into my stomach. And all that gnawing pain I was feeling in my upper abdominal area was caused by the doxycycline. And when it finally reached into my stomach, it also caused the irritation there. That's why I had the chronic inflammation of my esophagus, the junction, and my stomach. Like I told you in my previous video, I took myself off the doxycycline when I was about six or seven days in because I just could not take the pain anymore. I didn't know where the pain was coming from. Um, so my doctor had then told me it was most likely he's 99% positive, 100% positive. It was caused by the doxycycline because it is a very, very, very harsh antibiotic. Um, he just reminded me, Alicia, whenever you're taking medication, especially for me and having my hiatal hernia surgery, make sure you flush your body with lots of fluids. That way you know it gets past that junction because you don't want nothing to get sucked there and then trickle its way into your stomach because it can cause all kinds of issues in your upper abdominal and stomach and esophagus area. So, yeah, um, once... I guess the medication finally got through my system all the way. I stopped having the pain. I stopped having the upper abdominal pain. Um, once I, you know, took myself off the medication and had to like literally go through my entire body with after my endoscopy, um, I'll say about a couple of weeks after that, I was fine. A week, maybe a week or two after I was completely fine. I have not had that upper abdominal pain since then and I thank God for that because that was very very hard having to deal with pneumonia um, and then taking an antibiotic to help with the pneumonia but the antibiotic which is the doxycycline caused a whole set of other issues I couldn't not explain but I'm so glad I was able to get the endoscopy done and the colonoscopy to make sure everything was okay. As far as my colonoscopy is concerned, everything checked out perfect with that. Um, so I had nothing to follow up on in regards to pain in regards to my colonoscopy. It was just strictly the ab upper abdominal area I was dealing with. And that's pretty much it. So um, that is the result and the outcome of my endoscopy and colonoscopy. A lot of lessons learned here, lessons learned, Alicia, when you're, basically when you're ingesting anything, when you're taking anything by mouth, especially after you have something like a hiatal hernia done, especially with medication, lots of fluid, lots and lots and lots of fluid to get it past that junction that was closed off during your hiatal hernia surgery. Because otherwise that medication, no matter how big or small it is, it could sit in that junction area before it enters your stomach. Um, also, I know now that I cannot take doxycycline. I refuse. I put it on my allergy list. I know the symptoms are not allergies, but I make sure I put it on all my doctor's um, visits. That If they say, hey, do you have an allergy? Yes, I have an allergy to doxycycline. Like I say, it's not an allergy, but I want to make sure they have it in their notes. I cannot take this medication. I refuse to take doxycycline anymore for anything. You're going to have to give me something else because that experience was very taxing on my body, um, very painful. Um, it literally took me down to, gosh, how can I explain it? I felt helpless. I felt helpless and I felt hopeless because 
again, I couldn't explain what was going on with my body and something as small as something that's supposed to help you wind up hurting me in the end because I did not know to keep flushing, 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 flushing. But it's okay because I know there's other medications out there that can help me. Um, like for instance, amox uh, amoxicillin, right? Where it like get like a something I needed that for. I know that works great for me. I know if I get inflamed with like sinusitis, I know prednisolone works for me. Uh, I've never had any issues with that. I just know that I can't never take that particular medication anymore. And that's where the knowledge comes in, where you don't get sucked into this. I can't take anything. I. I don't, I'm the kind of person where I'm like, if there's something wrong, fix it. If there's something wrong, fix it. I don't want to get sucked into the, um, the conspiracy theories of, oh my gosh, if I take this, then this is going to happen because my mindset is already here. I'm a person from coming from a healthcare standpoint. I have enough knowledge to know what will work and what will not work in regards to my body. And also if I'm working with patients, as I did um, in my previous job, hey, make sure you consult with the doctor and with the patient simultaneously so we can come up with a plan. And that's what I did with my GI doctor. I sat down with my GI doctor and us, we collaborated and we came up with a plan in regards to my body. Now, as far as the enlarged fatty liver, he did suggest for me a fibro scan, which is where they go in and they do a like a scan of your uh, liver to see exactly if there's stenosis, if there's hardening in that area. At this present moment, I decided not to go with that um, because my first course of action will is going to be. He already told me uh, you can it can self correct itself an enlarged fatty liver if you lose some weight. <laughs> so. Yes, I'm still on it. I'm I'm proud of the results I have so far and the fact that I'm able to keep going. There have been times where I've given up. I'm just like, I'm tired. Not giving up and saying I'm just going to keep the weight on. You know, I'm human, so frustration does set in, but I've not stopped. I have not given up in that regards. So I'm going to go through the weight loss route first. And if I go, I go back and I get my things done, I still see I have an enlarged fatty liver. Hey doc, what's the next steps? What can I do to correct that? Um, but like I said, that was everything I have so far in regards to the um, colonoscopy, endoscopy, results, follow-up, and things of that nature. So if you like this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe with your friends. Comment down below if you have any experience in regards to um, doxycycline, endoscopies, colonoscopies, um, anything in regards to how you know hernias and medications, or anything that you would like to discuss, or if you have anything that you would like for me to discuss on this channel, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will check you out in the next video. Have a blessed day. Bye.